Well, God gave us two words for this church. If you know them, shout them out with me. Come on. Hope and healing. Hope for tomorrow, healing from our yesterday, and that's all found in Jesus. And I want to welcome you to a series we've entitled Stories with Jesus. Stories of Jesus, and it's all found in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what we're doing with this fun series is we're taking stories of Christ in the Scripture, reading the stories, and then we're playing some clips from the Chosen series to just help you expand your imagination to understand and maybe picture what it would have been like to be in that day. Now, we don't just watch the Chosen because the Chosen is not the Bible. We still read the Bible. Can I hear an amen? It's just, it's, it's a depiction and we're using that as an analogy. Don't let anything replace the written word of God. But today I want to look at a, an issue in the Bible. Now, it has been said that we make 30,000 decisions every day. Everybody on the count of three, raise your eyebrows. One, two, three. <laughs> now it's 30,000 and one. <laughs> the whole church looks surprised. We are problem solving all day long. Some of you are quick to reach out for help. Some of you are not. You know who you are. We have these issues that arise every single day. And these issues that come up, some are great, some are small. The issue is, the big idea of the day really is this. What you reach for when you have an issue ought to be able to remedy the issue. I'll say it again, just so you can get the big concept of the day. What you reach for when you have an issue ought to be able to remedy the issue. For instance, if you're thirsty, reach for water. If you're hungry, reach for food. If your breath stinks, reach for a mint. If you have athlete's foot, reach for gold bone. You know, it sounds like a commercial. <laughs> We understand it when it comes to all these analogies, all right? But how strange would it be to have an issue and to reach for something that was incapable of remedying the issue? For instance, let's say you're thirsty and you reach for a wrench. You're hungry and you reach for a flip-flop. We understand the analogy there. But then why does it become so convoluted and complicated when we have these other issues and we reach for things that are incapable of remedying our issues like purpose, sin, and forgiveness? Why are we reaching for so many other things that are totally and completely incapable? They do not have the capacity to help us with our issue. Today, I want to look at a Bible verse. It's a picture of a woman who had an issue. And I want to read this story found in several different places in Scripture. But I want to talk to you about what an issue is, all right? We have an issue being a vital or an unsettled matter. It's a vital or an unsettled matter. There's something that has not been solved yet. Now, the story we're going to look at can be found in Matthew chapter five, 9, uh, Mark chapter 5, and Luke chapter 8. Mark's gospel gives a little bit more detail. And this story really unfolds in a city called Capernaum, right outside by the Sea of Galilee. The story is actually in a larger story of someone else. So Jesus is on his way to heal a synagogue leader's daughter. She's 12 years old. She's almost going to die. He begs him, come to my house. Jesus is on his way to perform a miracle at Jairus' house, and then this unnamed woman interrupts Jairus' miracle. Now, can you imagine for a moment how irritated Jairus possibly felt? Like, I know what it feels like when someone interrupts the guy helping me at Home Depot. I'm like, yeah, he was helping me first. Do you not see? He's, he's literally helping. We're talking right now. Can you just wait in line? <laughs> Can you imagine Jairus has Jesus going to his house to make a house call to heal his baby girl who's, who's 12 years old and this unnamed woman interrupts Jesus. This is where we find our story. But can I tell you this? God is always moved by your faith. He never knocks faith. He always knocked doubt in the Bible. Let faith be your default position. 
And can I tell you this? God has moved into action by your faith even when he's in the middle of something else. How many are grateful God can hear us all at the same time? That's why we don't have to pray one at a time. We can all pray at the same time, and he hears us all at the same time. Here's what we know. This woman that we're about to talk about had a bleeding issue. She's bleeding for 12 years. That's a long time. Number two, she has spent all of her money on treatment, and it has not helped. She's only gotten worse. Number three, due to ceremonial law, Jewish law in this time, based on Leviticus chapter 15, she would be considered unclean. Regardless if it was a, it was a normal issue or a sickness, but when she's bleeding, she would be considered by everybody else unclean. So get this, she couldn't go worship in the synagogue. And anything or anybody that touched her would also be considered unclean. So she lived a life of isolation and seclusion because of this issue. Let's go to the scriptures and we'll read it. Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd, say crowd. A crowd welcomed him for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter... A girl about 12. Hmm. I don't know if Jairus thought when that woman interrupted and said she was sick for 12 years, did he catch maybe she has had this issue as long as I've had my daughter? I don't know. 12 years is a long time. But his 12-year-old girl was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds, say the crowds, almost crushed him. This is the paparazzi. These are all the onlookers. These are the people that want to see what Jesus is going to do next. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one can heal her. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Oh, that's a good day. Who touched me? Jesus asked, which is a funny question. When they all denied it, Peter's like, uh, everybody's touching you. <laughs> it's a crowd of people. Like, what are you talking about? <clears throat> Jesus is going somewhere. Stay with him. Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you, and you're asking now who touched you? But Jesus said, no, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out of me. And then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed. Interesting. Everybody else ignored her, but Jesus took notice of her. Listen, you might feel lonely in a crowd. He still sees you. Then he said to her, daughter, oh. She probably didn't even have family at this moment. And he leads with this. He doesn't lead with her issue. He leads with her true identity, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Let's watch this clip from The Chosen. Twelve years. Twelve years is a long time. She was desperate for a miracle, and this lady, the Bible said she had no hope. The Bible is describing her as a woman who's run out of options. But when she heard about Jesus, she came to Jesus, watch this, only because she heard about Jesus. How? Someone told her. Someone told this woman about Jesus. I wonder this year how many people will hear about Jesus from you. The only reason people are coming to Christ is because Christians are sharing their faith. 
The Bible says when, they, when, when she heard about Jesus, she came to Jesus, and this miracle is forever locked in history in the Bible. Can I encourage you? Share your faith. You don't have to be weird about it. You know, some people get real weird. Turn people off with the gospel. Don't do that. Don't be false advertising. But love people. Matter of fact, I borrowed this from the last couple of weeks. I've been telling you, what would happen if all 5,000 people at the church said to this week, this week, I'm going to text someone. This week, hey, I was thinking about you. Just, just want to know how you're doing. Smiley face, heart, lightning bolt, <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> invite someone to coffee. Just invite them to coffee. No agenda. Just open up lines of communication. How about we call someone this week? Hey, just needed to hear your voice. I want to check on you, see how you're doing. What if every one of us brought someone to church? You have incredible opportunities. Next week, we're doing the same series. And then I want to encourage you, our At The Movies is coming up August 11th. That's one of the best series to invite a friend. Bring a friend to church. Come on, anybody know anybody that has some issues? Do we just watch them have issues or do we point them to Christ, the only one who can remedy the issue? She heard about Jesus. She pressed. She reached. She heard. She pressed. <clears throat> she reached. She heard. She pressed. She reached. She reached through the crowd and just touched the hem of his garment because she thought she had enough faith to say, if I could just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. If I could just come to Jesus, I can be healed. Can you imagine the looks that she got? Can you imagine the faith that it took for her to press through the crowd? Nothing else worked. Nothing else helped. But when she heard about Jesus, there was something ignited in her faith to realize he's what I've been missing. He's what I need. Matter of fact, some of you today, you've been reaching out for all the wrong things to try to fulfill your life, and you're going to have the same revelation as this poor woman in the Bible who was elevated to a place of faith. You're going to realize he, Jesus, is what I've been missing. Jesus is what I need. What else are we reaching for? She heard. She pressed. She reached. Listen, you're going to have to press through some stuff too. Listen to me, everybody. You're going to have to press through the crowd. If you, if you want to be different from the crowd, then you have to press your way through the crowd. Students, when you go back to school, you're not going to be like everybody else at the school. You're pressing your way through the crowd. We have to press through all of the, of the, of the nonsense and the chaos and the, the craziness of this year and the election and all the crazy stuff that's going on in school and our nation. And Press through it. Don't let the crowd set the pace. Let a hunger for Jesus set the pace. Let a hunger for God set the pace. We're going to have to learn how to press through some stuff. Press through boredom. Press through fatigue. Press through lowered and limited expectations. And remind yourself who we are reaching for is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator and the sustainer of all things. Come on, everybody. And it's, and it's in his grace. He's even allowed us to come to him. Somebody shout press. Press your way through. Some of you had to press through some stuff to get to church today. You almost didn't show up today. You had to press through some drama. You had to press through some fatigue and tiredness and drama that's going on at your job. And you had to press through the voices in your head that told you to stay home. But you're here because you're pressing. So keep pressing. And then reach. Reach for Jesus. Reach for him. Prayer is reaching out. Worship is reaching out. Reading your Bible is reaching out. Giving is reaching out. Even in worship, we don't stand there like this, waiting for the songs to be over. Even in worship, our hands are raised, honoring his presence, saying, God, we need you. I, as a kid, I used to think worship, I would lift my hands and say, God, I need you to pick me up. I'm going through something right now, and I can't do it. I'm extending my hands and my faith to you. I'm reaching out. Because there's a lot of people that are around Jesus, but he stopped to notice the one who reached out. He sees your individual faith even in the crowd. Side note, just the thought. What a difference between 
the crowd that was just curious about Jesus versus the ones who reached out to Jesus. And I say that because this woman was so desperate that through the crowd, she just reached out to Jesus and she was healed. Can I tell you this? People who reach for Jesus have a different hunger level. Everybody doesn't share the same hunger for God that you do. You're not going to be normal, and that's okay. You have to be okay with not being normal. There, other people are content with just knowing about Jesus. We want to know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings. We want to know him for ourselves. You need a personal trust relationship with Jesus Christ. Because there's a lot of people that are looky loose. Like I was in a line one time at a restaurant, standing in line to get my food. There was a group of people in front of me not moving. After a few minutes, I said, excuse me, are you guys in line? They said, oh, no, 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 we're just looking. <laughs> At which point, I, by I bypassed them because I'm hungry and I actually came here to eat. I didn't come here to stare at a menu. I came to consume something <laughs> that's going to nourish my body. Listen, it's okay to start as a looky-loo. But at some point, you need to know we're leading you to more. Let's not just be, be people who are looking at the crowd or looking at Jesus. You need to know Jesus for yourself. Because there's crowds of people that go to churches all over the world. But their hunger doesn't look like yours. There are people that, that, that scroll through Instagram and they'll watch little sermon clips. But they don't know Jesus yet. It's okay. They're on their journey. That's great. But you just need to know something separates hungry people. It's not enough just to observe what's going on on the outside. I'm just telling you, that might be the case for some people, but that's not the case for you. We came to worship Jesus. We came to lean into Jesus. We came to reach Jesus. It's okay to spectate at first. You got, that's where you start. It's okay. Be comfortable there. Just know we're leading you to more. Because there are a lot of people who are familiar with Jesus, but nothing's changed in their life. A vague acquaintance does not change your life. It's when you reach out to him. You open up your life to him. People are not bettered by a vague acquaintance. It's faith that causes you to reach out. This woman thought to herself, if I could just reach Jesus, if I could just touch his hem, the hem on his coat... I'll be healed. Look at this. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Not that it's hard. Not that it's difficult. It doesn't happen. So we come to him, first of all, believing that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. I'm telling you, there's a seeking required. There's a pressing that's required that you have to be a determined mindset to go and reach Jesus. So the question is, are you just curious about Jesus? Or are you going to reach out for him knowing, knowing, knowing that in his mercy, he will heal your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit. Come on, thank the Lord right now if you're grateful for Jesus. Back to our text, Jesus asked the question, who touched me? <laughs> Which again is a hilarious question. But you have to realize anytime Jesus asks a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He's asking the question out loud to teach a lesson. He said, who touched me? And Peter's like, everybody. <laughs> what are you talking about? Could it be maybe Jesus wanted this precious woman to identify herself? Or could it be that Jesus wanted to teach this crowd and all these religious empty folks that the woman they considered unclean deserved attention and respect? Could it be? Listen, I found in the scripture, Jesus is often teaching multiple lessons to multiple groups of people at the same time. So he's teaching the young lady one thing. He's teaching the crowd one thing. He's teaching these empty religious Pharisees one thing who don't believe he's the Messiah. In this culture, remember, according to Jewish law, Leviticus 15, if anybody touched a woman who was bleeding, they would be considered unclean. So these Jewish men went way out of their way to not even, I don't want to be in contact with her. I don't want to talk to her. They wouldn't even look at her. 
So there was zero mercy, zero pity, zero hope, and zero help. And Jesus announced in front of everybody, this woman right here who has an issue, who you have written off as unclean, I just want to let you know, she touched me. He was letting them know Jesus could not be unclean. He's God. And he turned around and he's looking at them, making a very clear point. Jesus was like, I have the power to heal what you won't even look at. I'm welcoming people you turn your back on. This poor woman with an issue of blood for 12 years finally encounters Jesus and brings her issue to the only one who can remedy the issue. Can I just say, do not keep your issues by yourself. And don't let your issues keep you from coming to Jesus. Because you know the folks, we've all done this at some point in our life. We're like, I need to fix my issues and then I'm going to come to Jesus. No, 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 no. That's backwards. We can't heal ourselves. We come to Jesus and he's the one who does the healing. I love the fact Jesus saw the woman. He saw her. You might be overlooked by the crowd. You're not overlooked by Jesus. He still sees you. He still knows you by name. And he calls you son. He calls you daughter. But notice what he said. Jesus said, your faith, not your mama's faith, not your daddy's faith, not your grandma's faith. At some point, this faith has got to become your own. Students, listen to me. This is not a grown folks thing. This is not a grandparents thing. This is a you thing. This is an everybody thing. Press through the crowd. Reach for Jesus. Because here's what Jesus said. According to your faith, let it be done unto you. So where's our faith level at? We read the Bible, Romans 10. The Bible builds our faith. And the more we read the Bible, the more I begin to believe God. The more I begin to put my faith in God, and faith comes by hearing, but when you hear the word of God, something's activated. That's why church is so important. That's why reading your Bible is so important, because something begins to stir in you, and pretty soon your faith moves to action. Faith always has a step, because faith without works is dead. You can't say you have faith if you ain't stepping. I got so much faith, but I haven't moved. That's not faith. Faith actually has a step. It actually goes out on a limb to put everything in God's hands. She heard faith was activated, moved into action, reached to Jesus, and here's the beautiful result. Jesus stopped what he was doing, looked down at this precious woman and says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. And then here's the second part. Here's the second. Now go in peace. When was the last time that this woman experienced peace? Twelve years ago, if that. I think the greatest feeling in the entire world has got to be relief. When you are sick, the relief of being made well. When you are empty, the relief of finally connecting to your purpose. And when you are broken by sin, the relief of experiencing forgiveness. Has anybody experienced relief? You have to have a place where you offload your burdens. Because you've been carrying, this poor woman was carrying this in isolation, no small group, no, no synagogue, nothing. It's just her for 12 years. She was so desperate, she realized everything else I've been reaching out to, it's not working. But I heard about this Jesus, and if I could just make my way to him, I I think he has the answer. I think he can remedy my issue. You're healed. Your faith healed you. Now go in peace. Can I tell you? Listen, listen. The world is so anxious right now. feels like everything is in pieces. Maybe you can relate. Can I tell you this? Just because your life is in pieces doesn't mean you can't still have peace. 
But, but your peace is directly tied to your proximity to Jesus. We cannot have peace without him. Peace does not come. No, no. I don't need a crystal. I need Jesus. Jesus doesn't just give peace. He is peace. He's not a byproduct of peace. He is the definition of peace. A calming in my soul. I wish I had somebody in here who knew what it felt like to go through a difficult season and storms and then you met Jesus and all of a sudden he brought a calming to your home. He brought a calming to your marriage. He brought a calming to your mind. When everything else was empty, you still had peace in him. Come on, clap your hands if you're grateful for Jesus. He is peace. And when you get the peace of God, that comes as a result of making peace with God. She came to Jesus. She's known. We don't even know her name. Oh, she's known as in the Bible is a woman with an issue of blood. Remember the definition of an issue. It's a vital or unsettled matter. She had her, her issue and we have ours. So what do you reach for when you have an issue? Because remember, what you reach for when you have an issue ought to be something that has the capacity to remedy your issue. The definition of insanity is trying to keep, you keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. How many times are you going to reach for the bottle? It's not working. How many times do we keep going here or expecting it to be in another relationship? It's not. You have spent so much time. You have spent so much of your life reaching for things that do not have the capacity to remedy the issue. How about today we... We let our faith be built by this precious woman who finally got it when she heard about Jesus. She ran to Jesus. She reached for Jesus, and she was healed. As I close, the last question, I guess, is so what seems to be the issue? In your life, what seems to be the issue? She had hers. We have ours. But do you now know where to go with the issue? Look, look, if it's an issue for purpose, reach for him. If it's an issue of emptiness, reach for him. If it's, if it's an issue of sin and forgiveness, repent, go reach to him. Don't let the issue keep you away from Jesus. Let it push you to him. But there's got to be a determined spirit like this woman to press through some stuff. Don't just sit at home. Reach for him. But you will not reach for Jesus until your faith is strong enough to believe he is what you need. Paul would go on a few years later to say this. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Grace is God giving you a free gift. You don't work for, for his salvation. We don't work for it. We don't earn it. We're not good enough. Grace is a gift. It says so right here. This is not from yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works, so that no one will boast. Even receiving grace comes through faith. Believing, remember, it's impossible to please God without faith. You got to first believe that he exists, that he is who he says he is, the savior of the world. And then he rewards those who earnestly seek him. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, what have you been reaching out for in hopes of healing? Today, I wonder, can we turn 
begin to reach for Jesus like you never have before. I'm talking about you're no longer just going to be in the crowd. You're going to be part of the ones who are pressing. You're not just going to be in the crowd. You're going to be the ones who are serving. You're not just going to be in the crowd. You're going to be the ones who are worshiping, hands up, raised, loving God, sharing your faith, living for him. Do you think this woman had a testimony after? Everybody called her unclean. Nobody was on her side. She was alone in this world with a major issue until she met Jesus. And then she found her identity as a daughter. She found healing, restoration, and a relationship with, with Christ. Today you have pressed through to be here. Some of you are living like her in isolation. Your issue might not be what her issue is. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus wants you to reach for him.